103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, September 19th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Freshly vaccinated from the flu, freshly vaccinated from COVID, I'm feeling stronger than ever. Did you get your booster yet? Uh, I got my boosters already, yep. Oh, really? Everyone in our lab got Next month. Yeah, Yeah. cool. Our guests today are George Brown, the second and a half, or Brooklyn, hello. Hello. And Dread Pirate Higgs. Hey, Gary from uh, Canada. Hi there. A digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio mm-hmm. show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. Con- Wombat, what's their uh, topic for today? Don't you dare vaccinate me. I believe in Jesus. And then (laughs) we'll have that conversation coming up. But before we do that, I'm going to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Hicks for our weekly invocation. All right. So this comes from the Kenai Peninsula Borough Assembly. I'm called to invoke the power of the true creator of the universe, the drunken tolerator of all lesser and more recent gods and maintainer of gravity here on earth. May the great flying spaghetti monster rouse himself from his stupor and let his noodly appendages ground each of us in our seats. Raw. I wonder where the po- the pose for praying has come from like this. Like, I wonder where that comes from. At least as far as ASL comes, it means beg, right? But well, like maybe I've, for, what do you think? Uh, well, I've heard other descriptions saying that it's a position uh, that you of submission that you would put your hands together like this so you, you could be handcuffed or manacled. Oh, you know, that type of thing. wowie, wowie, mm. wowie. Dread ideas for the pose for prayer? Yeah, so he's doing the spaghetti pose. I like that. See? <laughs> Just look, looks like the quab there. Yeah. yeah. George, yeah, let me another, tell you something. Oh, go for it. One other, th- one other thing about uh, praying. Uh, if you get into the full bodily position of praying, you're down on your knees and you have your hands together, which Absolutely. is even more s- submission. Yeah, it's crazy. A pose of submission. George, I w- it's good to see you. How you been since last week? Well, uh, <laughs> I'm older. Um, <laughs> you don't look it. The, <laughs> being older beats the alternative to being older. Right, so yeah. I, I always am grateful. I, I'm grateful, but I'm not uh, supplicatingly grateful nice. for, for another day on the planet. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, having said that, I'm still, I'm still uh, investigating the effect upon all of us throughout history of psychopaths, you know, that um, uh, the concept that psychopaths have been ruling us in various ways uh, forever, you know, psychopaths like our late departed president of the United States. You said departed, Uh, or do you mean just kicked out? Because... Well, he's not there. He's not in the way. Okay, 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 okay. Let me ask, uh, let me give you another you know, but, direction but, but, for your psychopathy study. Why would they want that? to, uh, in your psychop- study of psychopathy, psychopathy, yeah. you might want to look into why they want to rule us. Well, yeah, that's a urge. whole part of it. That, you know, the, the other yeah. part of what I'm really interested in is what are called cluster B personality disorders, which is a whole group of um <laughs> Disorders. Psychopathic personalities. <laughs> They're gonna... not, antisocial personality disorder ah, okay. is more of a, but but I mean borderline personality disorder is one of them. Uh, narcissism. Oh man. Uh, George, I, I think I can wrap this up. I think it takes an incredibly interesting person to say, I want to be in charge of everything. Literally everything. Can I is that a job? I'll take that job. And like actually go through well, the yeah, it, it, process of like, well, I want to be your boss, you your boss, your boss. Can I just be everyone's boss? Yeah, but, Is there a problem? but you deserve it. You deserve to be the boss of everybody. So, now, you know, there's the line that's crossing the sand, but I still feel like the person who applies for that job has 
something about them that's very interesting. But we'll, we can always well, usually, yeah, usually there is like why they became that way, the insecurities sure. that lie behind the disorder. Or, or maybe it's like, hey, there's just a problem that needs to get fixed and this system ain't fixing it. We're going to have to figure this out. I imagine not everybody who goes for that role well, is Well, you know, I'm talking about, I mean, it's an equal opportunity disorder. So, you know, Idi Amin was a great example of it. You know, Saddam Hussein, I mean, we're all in this together. You know, well, the guy in Israel who just lost out. Um, but, uh, you know, the, pre the people who run corporations, I mean, they're, they're all over, you know. Let's see. So, Dr Dread Pirate Higgs, what's going on with you? How you been? Good, good. Uh, yesterday, or Friday, I should say, we had uh, our monthly pass that. So we gathered at the, uh, the church and had a big feast, and uh, it was all good. And then tomorrow, Mark this. Tomorrow is Talk Like a Pirate Day internationally. Oh, <laughs> tomorrow is that day. Tomorrow okay. is the oh, day. Oh, September 19th every good. year. So. We had an important corporate visit on Tuesday, so I'm glad it's on a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. And have yeah. you been... Okay, so have you Oh, no, been... it's today. No, it's oh. today. It's the 19th. I'm one day. I'm one day behind. He's seriously... You're, you're like a person that just forgot Christmas you know, happened. We uh, talk like pirates. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So could you give me some good popular uh, pirate phrases that I can use in my belt? Well, I give you the two favorite letters. Because I only know are I am R the captain now. And C. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I only know I'm the captain now. <laughs> which, is, which is very piratey, but it's very modern. I think it, it means something. Uh, here, here, Here's one. Talk to me. I, I ate some pie. And it was delicious. Oh, man. So it's an eight. I did remember seeing the shirt before, but I was wondering, what's the exponent referred to? That's, <laughs> that was a rough one for me. Okay. So for anyone who's listening over the radio, he's wearing a T-shirt that has a bunch of mathematical uh, equations. Yeah. And it basically means I ate some pie, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. Larry, how you been? Oh, he's on mute. You're on mute. You pushed the mute button. There we go. Doing fine, getting older like George. Nice. But, we all are. Hey, that's not a unique yeah. thing to just you two guys. Yeah, no, no. Like I said, like he said, it's better than the alternative. It's truth. Not getting older. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we're also going to play a little thing called What's on Your Shirt? What's on Your Shirt, Larry? Tell me what's on your shirt. Oh, hey. it's nautical ropes and knots and some ships and this deep blue sea. So nice. it's kind of pirate, piratical. It is, it is, it is, it is. And it's good representation. So we're talking today about uh, something I heard in the news today or earlier this week. And what I try to do when I wake up in the morning is not read any news, but Google has a good way of force feeding it to me somehow in some way that I don't want to get it. And I get it on my watch even when I look at the watch sometimes. I know, and it's the most, it's the smallest little earworms that change the entire right. course of my thinking for the rest of the day. I'm trying to block them out, but I did yeah. see something that I thought was kind of alarming because the things that do indirectly harm me or the people that I care about are the things that like pop out the most as I'm thinking about them throughout the day. And so what I saw was that there is religious groups asking for exemptions for vaccination based on religious grounds. And this is in America, so this is largely focused on an American topic, but Canada is also America, so I wonder if it's happening over there too. Basically, religious groups are saying, hey, if we choose, well, since Biden has said, hey, I think any business that has more than 100 people should get vaccinated, or have regular tests for the people who don't want to get vaccinated. So that way we can curb this, you know, sudden second wave spike that we're all facing as a nation and get safer overall, because it won't work unless we all participate in this to somehow or in some capacity. And so what I'm thinking is uh, there are a lot of religious groups that are like, I don't want to get vaccinated. I shouldn't be allowed to, I shouldn't have to be mandated because on religious grounds, I don't have to get vaccinated. And I thought that's such a, that's such an interesting That's excuse. Stupid. It's dumb. Where yeah. does it come from? And so, Larry, right. it sounds like you want to say some things because I know I got some stuff too. Well, I mean, there's so many passages in the Bible that tell you to obey the authority of your government. Um, let's see, I've brought up one or two here. Uh, the Bible speaks decisively on this issue. Romans 13, 1 and 2 say, Obey the government, for God is the one who put it there. Hmm. 
That's scary. Sorry, excuse me. Um, I mean, there's like a, a hundred other ones. There's uh, Romans there's, um, or thirteen two. Um, sorry, uh, that's all thirteen one two. Acts five and twenty nine. Yeah, uh, I remember. Uh, obey. Go ahead. I remember a classic verse from Jesus where someone asked him, Hey, so should I stop taxing? And, and, and what you're telling me to pay money to tithe to God, but does that mean I should stop taxing from Caesar? And Jesus says, no, what belongs to Caesar belongs to Caesar. What belongs to God belongs to God. Don't change anything that you're doing for the government, including slavery, by the way, <laughs> keep all right. that. But here's some extra rules from God. I'm just like, uh, these are still pretty bad. And I think the takeaway is like, I can misconstrue any information from reality to make it fit my ideal interpretation of religion that I can follow. So if I want mm. God to like my favorite music, I can make a version of a, of a Bible passage, you know, be in line with that. But on vaccinations, that just seems like something really dangerous not to fall in step with. Dread, what do you think? Well, we have here in British Columbia uh, a vaccination passport program. I, I think I might have mentioned this last week, <clears throat> where um, you have to uh, go online through the, the local health authority um, and get a QR code. Mm. which uh, which you then take to the bar or restaurant or whatever. And it, all right, well, it's the blurs on. Hang on a second. Yeah, I, I find like putting it in front of my body, but yeah. Yep. Anyway, it's hard to see, but... Um, Especially on the radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so anyway, um, the, the provincial uh, mm. doctor, you know, the head doctor of the province there, um, in writing up this order, uh, there's all these uh, voluntary you know, services like uh, restaurants and pubs and all that kind of stuff, but has excluded religious gatherings from uh, having to participate in this. Oh, so this is taking it up to the next level. Is mm -hmm. not only are they looking for exemption on religious grounds, but now not even having to uh, abide by um, the rules that uh, the rest of society is uh, being uh, told to conform with. So now what is this based on? Because what's the ruling that they're, they're using? Because I can, I can try to steel man it, but I don't get it even in that sense. So I'm wondering well, what your question is. You know, the, I think the conversations did not happen in public mm. um, because it was Bonnie Henry is the provincial head doctor. Uh, just came up with her order hmm. um, and just said who's included and who's excluded. So, you know, you, you can still go to city hall. You can, um, you know, there's some essential services that you don't need to have this passport thing, but um, you know, all these other public functions you do accept uh, religious groups. Yeah. So, Larry, it's, it's a little arbitrary. Larry, I've been deemed like an essential worker during the first wave. And it was like, hey, here are a list of essential workers. You got your firemen, you got your police, you have scientists that are actively making face masks, media and stuff like that. And essential workers, pastors too. I'm just like, w w okay, uh, wait, hold up. Essential like, workers, are, what, what was the last thing you kind of Essential workers, up? pastors, pastors, pastors. Oh, and right. I'm like, okay. But don't they make congregations of people who like all gather in one big place right. and like sit next to pews and like, isn't this actively, yep. are, is the work really essential? Couldn't they do that over Zoom? Like, do yep. they, like, what's going on here? I'm wondering what was crazy. It's kind of, I was kind of freaking out. Yep. It does mm -hmm. seem arbitrary. Larry, I'll throw out this rule to you. Do you think there's grounds for separation between church and state for a person who's religious to say, government can't tell me what to do if, if it conflicts with my religion? Well, obviously, I believe in separation of church and state because the state has the ultimate authority over you. They can, they can take away your freedoms. They can arrest you, throw you in jail. Uh, uh, we have many protections written into law that would protect us against uh, unfounded arrest and and closure but you give that to a church you give the kind of power to a church or bring the church's rules uh, their bible rules into the government and you've got uh, no protections pretty much and this is, was pretty much what happened during uh, the 
inquisitions. 400 years of, of the church having uh, their authorities go out and round up people, bring them in for no other reason other than like blasphemy or non-belief. Yeah. Yep. And taking all their possessions, throwing them in jail, letting them out, or just outright killing them. I mean, you even have to go back that far, even America, early America, witch trials, just like, hey, mm -hmm. a group of girls called you a witch, and now you're going to die. Right. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was just right. making wheat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, not only that, you had a cat, but think though. about this. Even in Christianity, you have Catholicism and Protestantism. Which sure. one is going to be uh, in, the, in power? Right. I mean, if, if, if Protestantism gets in, they may be the first target would be Catholic, Catholics, hmm. you know, to round them up and bring them in and make them all Protestant or kill them, you know, that right. kind of stuff. It has happened before. If I had to make my choice between the two, being controlled by a church state or at least the government state, at least I prefer the government in the sense of I can have impacts on, on, some, on some manner on how that's going to conduct my life. Whereas with the God mm -hmm. point of view, I have no inference. And the book's already written multiple thousands of years ago, and you follow that to the T. And I just find, like, I am terrified by the concept that despite hard evidence to show that vaccines are helpful and medicine is a good thing, that there are people taking the staunch position of, no, because in my impression of God, I don't feel like taking a vaccine, and therefore I don't have to because I have this particular superstition. I feel like that's such a dangerous place to be. George Brown, I don't want to bias the conversation. Do you feel the same way? How do you feel if someone says, I don't have to be vaccinated because I'm religious? Oh, I'm laughing. Um, I reject that argument. I mean, they are saying that they are given license to be a spreader of the disease. That's what I'm hearing. You know, um, the other thing I've been looking up, aside from, you know, just horrible people, the history of horrible people, is uh, I've been reading up on Typhoid Mary. And, uh, you know, her position was, you got to let me out of this quarantine because my, my freedoms are being abridged. And so they let her out. And right. she was, she was told, well, you can't cook for people anymore because that's how you're spreading the disease. And she said, okay, your honor, I won't do any more cooking. But it was the only thing that she knew how to do for a living. Um, she became a laundress for a while, but it paid one fifth of what it, what she could make as a cook. So she eventually went back to cooking. And of course, a few more people died. The important thing about typhoid Mary is that she was not a, she had no symptoms. She was asymptomatic. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, mm -hmm. but, but the main thing here, I mean, she finally got locked up again for good, but <laughs> The main thing here is that these people are saying, well, you have to allow me to spread the disease yeah. because, because God. And I don't care what right. the because is. These are people who are, who are putting the rest of us at danger of losing our lives. Right. Mm -hmm. And this simply should not be allowed in a civilization, which we I are, I think. Last I'm time I checked, I thought we were, yeah. I'll throw out the scientific guidelines. It's not so much that not vaccinating keeps you from getting the disease. What it does is it helps you fight it off faster because it trains your body to know what to anticipate. And that gives it less opportunities to mutate when you are infected and then reduces the chances of you passing on a mutated version of the virus to another person and so on and so on where it spreads. And now there's a new mutant out that isn't as effective to the vaccines that we all are getting, the people who are mm -hmm. getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. This is all about getting, uh, putting up a barrier wall of, hey, don't, virus, you, we're going to be ready for you. And by the time, you know, we go through like one or two ways, it will be so dispersed that you won't have enough, you know, people to actually successfully infect anymore. And maybe you'll go away. But that only works if we all get vaccinated, right? So it's not a, it's not a, hey, do it if you want to do it. It's more of like a, hey, this is a group effort to get rid of a disease that's actually hurting people. And even if you are infected and don't want to get vaccinated, that doesn't mean that you can't still hurt other people by transmitting a really infectious disease. 
despite the fact that you're asymptomatic, it's not just about mm -hmm. you. George, I saw yeah, your hand yeah. up. What's up? Yeah. So, so what are we going to do with the people who say, you know, I, you know, either uh, God tells me I don't have to wear a mask or get vaccinated, or uh, freedom, freedom, I'm free. You know, this is a so free I, country. We make their lives um, inconvenient by making them test at least once a week. That's that. I think that's which I I believe is totally ineffective. I mean, well, how they, about we we simply quarantine these people and we'll bring them their food? You know, how many, you know, we'll bring them cottage cheese and rutabagas and, you know. Well, you're talking a huge portion of the, of the society, the population. Yeah, it's like over 50 percent, isn't it? It's like 50 percent over right now, right? Yeah, but some I'm also, states. And then, I, yeah, especially uh, you say some states, but like, what what are we at? Like 60? Right. <laughs> but that's, and so I'm thinking is like tier it to weekly tests if you don't want to get vaccinated which is what was part of the mandate and if you are working and you are infected and you infect other people i think that should have repercussions on the corporation that hires you or the job that hires you like let's put dollars to actual dollars and actually make this really inconvenient for the people who are employers so that they have to take the onus and be like okay well screw this i'd rather hire people who are vaccinated and, and take care of themselves and people who option to actually harm other people through inaction. What's that? Oh, what's up? Hey, what's up, George? Um, you know, what I'm what I think I'm seeing here where I live is that there are employers that are putting restrictions on their employees. Hmm. You know, you, you can do whatever you want to at home, but here you wear a mask. Yeah, I've seen that. Here you prove. Place. Here you prove that you're vaccinated. I'm talking about right. like Dollar mm -hmm. Tree, Dollar Tree, for instance, which has a big sign in the window that says "Masks." What does it say? Um, masks suggested but not required. Right, and then they switch to required for a little bit, and then they switch back to the suggested but required. Yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is like saying I'm a little bit pregnant, just a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, it, I'm really so, Larry. I, it would like it sounded like you were going to say something. Did you not like the idea of weekly tests for people who choose not to get vaccinated? Well, I mean, you can be tested Monday morning and contract it by Monday afternoon, right. and then you're spreading it. What before the next week comes around? Right, and it only uh, takes yeah. what three or four days to get to the point where you're spreading it, right. and. What good is that? I mean, you've already contaminated, you know, a dozen more people at least. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a bare minimum, which really doesn't do a whole lot of good. Sure. I, I like the idea of it since it was like, <clears throat> hey, you don't want a tiny little needle stuck into your arm that you can barely feel. Well, how about a giant Q-tip stuffed down your nose that hits the back of your, your mouth and you have to have that happen to you once a week and you got to drive to the place for that to happen. Or you could just take the quick needle and be called and be done. You can even, there's even mm -hmm. one shot variants. Like what's more convenient for you? Like if you don't want to be penetrated either way, <laughs> take the smaller hit, take the smaller hit. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've, but, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you from a, you, from an actual utility point of view, it's not good, but I do like the inconvenience factor. Cause I think generally what this comes down to is when I talk to people who haven't gotten vaccinated yet, it's because they live in a bubble that they don't want to pop of information mm -hmm. or of particular in ignorance. And they are choosing based on the information that they are allowing to open themselves up to, to not. I, and I think it's pr particularly egregious that religious leaders mm -hmm. for, for no reason other than freedom, or, uh, they're, they're not for freedom and uh, they're for obedience to God and obedience to them. But then the religious leaders use religion to tell people not to take the vaccine. Mm -hmm. that that is putting their lives and other lives at, at risk uh, for no good reason and yeah. i i wish what we could do is just document this so well that from two years from now when everyone's like no but christians love vaccines right christians are always about supporting vaccines like no here's the hard truth of it here's all the video dread what's up uh i was just gonna say uh, um now I've forgotten. Um, but I'll actually, I just want to give a shout out to one of our regular watchers here, uh, Loma. It's his birthday today. So happy birthday, Loma. Happy birthday. Loma. Happy birthday, happy birthday Loma. Loma. Well, How about we take this as a break for the second half? Sure. Okay. Maybe I'll remember what I was going to say. Yeah, maybe. <laughs>
This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, September 19th, 2021. Now let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we are in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID for just get-togethers. But we've started uh, meeting in person again every week down at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria in Knoxville's old city out on the patio. So I hope you can come down there between 5.30 and 8 every Tuesday. I hope to see you there. Say hello to us. You can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or knoxvilleatheist.org. But come visit. Um, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Uh, Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Hey, I want to go over some listener feedback for the last couple of episodes that we put up. Uh, we Are the God says, very enjoyable show. I learned something new every episode here. Uh, What's Up Hut says, where's the audience for this content? Solid production and interesting people. Is it predominantly engaged with somewhere outside of YouTube? Feels like I would really enjoy a drink with you folks. And, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we are we are a radio show that broadcasts out of Knoxville and we do put these videos up online just as a courtesy. But uh, we've had another person leave a comment saying, hey, Ty, you should consider pushing your content to Google Podcast Manager or some such other device. I love listening to you guys and I'm quite sad I couldn't actually find Let's Chat on a real podcast application it's hard to watch youtube videos in the car keep up the keep up keep the epistemology coming i'm convinced this line of thinking has become more mainstream and will make us all better humans maybe they can replace debate hosts with epistemological hosts tie for president <laughs> that was from Chris Arvai. also uh ryan xavier says love your podcast Ty. always a pleasure to listen to amazing how you guys tackle topics and discuss them in under an hour love from new zealand and there's another guy on YouTube who has a uh, handle called Let's Chat. He says, very nice show. And then, of course, Dada's Trading Room with ever dedicated comments. And he got into a really nice debate on the last episode that we had. Uh, but basically is always a good friend of the show. And we really appreciate your comments, Dada. But thank you, everybody. It seems like the common question is, hey, how do we find your podcast? Larry, could you help us out with that? Oh, the pod podcast is, is generally um, just go to whatever your podcast app is on your iPhone or uh, computer and do search for digital free thought. We should be the only one with those two words in it. Uh, to, or you can search for the entire thing, digital free thought radio are, but we are on quite a few different podcasts at this point. Yep. Check and what else is free thought is one word. It can be one or two. I think in our case, it's regardless. two words. Yep. Okay. And I'll, and I'll start posting a link to the podcast in the actual YouTube descriptions. But thank you so much, guys, for leaving comments. We really appreciate them. We're going to be talking about a little bit more about the idea of religious freedom to infect other people with really terrible diseases. And shouldn't there be a guideline for that? Because obviously, if this was a, how do I put this? We are a Christian nation, and if this is a Muslim ideal of like, hey, I shouldn't have to cover my mouth when I cough, like that would be cracked down pretty hard. I feel like the reason why we give or even having the conversation about exclusion is because we're largely referring to Christian base core, uh, um, uh, uh, sugar people. I say sugar people because like when you put water on them, they melt. <laughs> but uh, Dread, for, for a lack of better names, uh, I've noted that you have sent me a link to like a, a preamble from the flying church of spaghetti monster that asked for people to have uh, privilege to not have to work with unvaccinated people. And yet right. when I saw that page, I was like, this is going to be taken as a joke, despite the fact that the science behind it is accurate and actually better for our culture that people do work away from vaccinated, unvaccinated people. Yeah. 
uh, Australia is is quite serious about it. So um, I, you know, of course, I'm friends with them all. So um, yeah, no, they're they're taking it seriously and uh, encouraging uh, other pastafarians around the world to uh, to get this started and to actually make it a legitimate uh, a legitimate uh, petition. Yeah, um, you know, the right to not have to work beside unvaccinated people. Right. There's no reason why you should have to put yourself in harm's way based on somebody else's ideology. Just to make a living wage for crying out loud, right? Right. So like, hey, I should be able to have a safe workplace, right? Yep. This is what OSHA is all about, right? Well, this yep. guy's not getting vaccinated and he's coughing. <laughs> I don't want to get <laughs> sick or get sick without realizing it and infect my family or kids who can't get vaccinated yet because they're not old enough. So mm -hmm. can we please fix this problem right now? Can you move yeah. him away or move me, move me away, but I don't want to work with this person. Okay. Like mm -hmm. employers, you should be able to step up to that. I think it's yeah, a common sure. courtesy yeah. and I think it's a human right to be able to work in a safe environment. Just my part. Uh, George, yeah. what's up? In, 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 in an almost identical vein, I would like to be able to go to to go shopping at the supermarket without risking my life in order to buy food. You know, it's more than items I would yeah. like. Yeah. yeah, I want the freedom to be able to go. No, hey, I like that idea. <laughs> Dread. Yeah, uh, just to speak uh, further to George's point, uh, my wife is uh, front end manager, a cash office uh, manager uh, for a local grocery store. The owner operator is an anti vaxxer. Go figure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Six members of his family got it. Did yeah. any of them die? No. 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 And he's right. still an anti-vaxxer? He's still an anti-vaxxer, yeah. So that's the six <laughs> new mutants released out. Well, the, I think there were seven day events. Yeah. And that's... Uh, uh, yeah, I just want to point out in case, in case uh, anybody hasn't seen this yet, um, that there have been four radio talk show hosts in the United States died, who have yeah. railed against vaccines who have died from COVID in the last month. Mm -hmm. You've got to wonder month. How, many, how many people four. that they also took with them because of their truth, yeah. their broadcast. Truth. Yeah. Truth. truth. I think every one, of the, every one of them regretted not having been vaccinated just before he died. And the crazy thing is the thing that people who get sent to the hospital for, like one for one, the number of people going to the hospital for COVID are largely unvaccinated people. Like the, it's a yes. staggering yes. Pop proportion. It's not even like 50%, That's it's like 90-ish percent of right. people are being sent right. to the hospital right now are unvaccinated. And the first That's thing they are all asking for is, can I get vaccinated <laughs> now? <laughs> and it's like, right. it's, yeah. that's not how the vaccines <clears throat> work. You have to get vaccinated way before that. So you that's can build right. immunity for it. Vaccines aren't curative, they're preventative. Exactly, right. it's, not, it's not the cure. The cure is everybody getting vaccinated. That's yeah. the cure. And if you don't do that, that's the problem. Then you become the issue. Larry, it sounded like I was stepping your toes. Also, Dred, you had forgotten something. So we're gonna come right back to you. I hope you sure. get a hold of remember it. Larry, no, my, my mind has moved on. I don't remember what it was now. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> okay. Well, before I lose my mind, um, I'm, I just wanted to mention that today around three o'clock, I'm actually having a, uh, um, uh, a, a Socratic examination with a gal who has not for religious reasons, uh, for other reasons, decided to be unvaccinated. So oh, I'm going to try and get to the root cause of her yeah, aberrant all of that thinking. Is, all now, is that live? Totally preventable. Is that What's live? That? A recorded conversation? Coffee over talks? What, do, what is this I'm, I'm, Yes, I'm going to ask her if she's okay with it. Um, uh, I would like to have that as a live conversation and recorded Ooh. conversation. So very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I'll be reaching out. I want to see, well, I, you know, take it. I, I understand how weird it is with spectators when you're having a one-on-one -on -one deep conversation, especially mm -hmm. if they start butting in and stuff. So have fun with that. And then give me the, give me the beats afterwards, but yeah, George back. Brown saw your hand up a couple of yeah, times. I, I, I just want to, I just want to mention this caution. Uh, we should never forget that the vaccine contains a chip, a yeah. little printed circuit, which is going <laughs> yeah. to be injected into your veins. But it also helps to don't forget that. But if you get that chip installed, the next chip comes with salsa 
and then that sounded <laughs> really, really good. So it's yes, all and once fun. you've had one, you can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the boosters are for. That's what the boosters are for. <laughs> oh, George really liked that one. That made me feel good. Uh, 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 <laughs> I want to throw this out. I, I, I'm a big fan of disc golf. I picked it up recently and a friend of mine, uh, the thing I like about disc golf compared to, uh, what, how I'll throw this out. When I used to do Socratic examinations a lot as a hobby, it was very taxing from the point of view of the person doing the interview. Cause you tend to have a lot of religious conversations in a day or a lot of political conversations in a day. And right. for the people who are walking by, they have <clears throat> five minute conversation that you know digs in their brain a little bit and they walk away and they have a good rest of the day i'm still sitting at the table making notes thinking about how i'm going to video edit and getting ready for the next conversation that might be an in-depth thing it's very exhausting but when i'm playing disc golf which is like my new hobby i don't have to think about any of that stuff i'm just thinking about what disc am i throwing and which way the wind's blowing that's it that's it and i love it and so when i'm out playing disc golf with friends i tend to not talk about anything political or you know or religious i just tend to enjoy the conversations of the game and you know whatever small talk we can muster at the point but i've had a friend who was about to go on a tirade about covid where he's like don't they know it's just the flu it's just the flu and i'm like <laughs> just swallow ty just throw your putter it's not going to be a big deal i'm not going to engage here i have the choice to say no but the thing is that same dude that same guy texted me about two weeks ago letting me know well looks like i got the covid and i'm like hmm well there's one friend i'm not gonna play this golf with for a period of time but i will check up on him because I, I still consider ourselves friend but it's the sort of thing where it's like i don't want to rub it in his face i don't want to be like yeah it's not the flu is it right and he has a family so like in my head it's like you know you got it you know you got a family you know you have a family you have two beautiful daughters you don't want them to get sick right like you already got it. Don't you think it's a good time for at least your wife or for you to have a serious conversation about your kids, about how to stay healthy in this environment? Because even if you get better, you're not helping other people get better. You know, like, even if you don't feel sick, you're not helping other people not get sick for the same exact disease that you are infected with right now. Doesn't that mean anything to you? And I don't want to, I don't want to have that conversation with them, but I found it easier just to be absent and, and, and just broadcast this frustration to you guys as a group. But it is something that really tears me apart. George, mm. take yourself off mute, my friend, and join in. Yeah. Um, well, following on what you're saying, I, I have a, a side topic here, which is, of course, who is spreading the disinformation? Mm. And secondly, how do we turn them around? How do we bring those guys over to our side? You make lies not profitable, and that's not the that's not going to happen anytime soon. Because delicious lies will always be more marketable than truth, right? Truth well, is like what, what are the what are the rest of you what are the rest of you think about about that? I mean, is it possible to to enlist the pastors, for instance? to save their flock by doing the right thing. Dread, George, I'll give you a tip. When you ask a question, direct it to a person. I want to pick on Dread Pirate. Dread Pirate, what do you think about George's question? Um, geez, that's, that's a tough one. I mean, if, I mean, if it ends up usurping their power over their flock uh, by making that kind of a suggestion. I mean, that's essentially what you're trying to do is uh, convince them that they're wrong as opposed to, you know, I suppose trying to have Socratic examinations with pastors would be probably the best uh, way to, to go about it. Um, I would chime in just only if they are willing to have an honest conversation with you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Not, then you'll absolutely. never have an SC conversation yeah. with them. It yeah. only works as a, in a fair two-party engagement. Exactly. So no finger wagging, that's for sure. They have to be open to being mm -hmm. wrong. And so if yeah. you're talking to someone who has a vested interest in not being wrong, you know, like mm -hmm. that is such a barrier. Like we've had a president, for example, who told people not to get vaccinated while he was the first in line to get vaccinated and get right. special treatment for vaccines. Right. So like we clearly know that people who have vested interests or advantage to lie 
or misinformed for their own benefit will continue to do so. And I don't think mm. there's any greater industry for false hope than religion. It tends to be the case that everything they've been selling has been immaterial and nothing but promises that only come true after you die, which is the most bizarre selling right. point possible. Mm -hmm. Dread. I was just thinking uh, another example is uh, Brazil, uh, the Brazilian government uh, prescribing or, uh, you know, directing people away from the vaccines to one of these things that the Trump administration was uh, supporting as completely ineffective. And this other stuff, the ivermectin, which is, uh, you know, used uh, for horse fleas for, yeah, or in, and also for fleas and ticks and whatnot. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and, and strangely how people are so willing to ingest a, essentially a poison um, that is not even, you know, effective on that uh, thing, but not willing to take a vaccine, which is, yes. Yes. that's, that is the crazy, that's the crazy thing that it just boggles my mind. Right. I think we are engaged in a propaganda war mm -hmm. right now. And we have changed into a propaganda culture in mm -hmm. general. Just my, yeah. my take on stuff. So, so how do we tackle that reality is my question. I think Darwin has it <laughs> in, in hand. I mean, uh, they're going to find out the hard way that mm -hmm. you, the vaccines are effective and safe. And by, by having a lot of their friends die, yeah. that's the only way I can yeah. think of. Like it's only through a cultural change will something like that happen. Right. It's not going to be a quick fix that people find out in a room. Like human beings need to be evolved to, at least culturally, to interpret data at a higher standard of integrity. And that yes. doesn't happen overnight. But no. we can begin the work now so that the future work has less work to do. And that's right. why I'm saying it's still yeah. worth valuing truth. It's still worth informing people because we don't want to stop learning, momentum. And learning right. the rules of fallacy. Learning yeah. the Fal rules fallacious. of fallacy, yes, yes. And just, and I'll throw out before we go to dread, just because you have fallacies in your thought process doesn't mean that it's not true. It just means that you can reach a higher standard by kicking them out. So get rid of those fallacies and find better ways to prove the things or demonstrate mm -hmm. things that you do believe to be true. And right. try to do it in the least fallacious way as possible. Yeah. Dread. Well, a couple of things is uh, being a critical thinker isn't necessarily about being critical of other people's thinking. Mm. It's about being critical <laughs> of your own, right? Oh boy. Elevating your standard of or your level of standard of evidence uh, and who you uh, respect as, as credible sources of information. That's, uh, that's pretty key. Um, I just got a comment here from uh, Loma. He says, uh, there was a woman who prayed to God to figure out whether to get her family vaccinated or not. And God said, no. Her husband wound up in the ICU. Wow. Hey, I'll throw this out too, because I like this story. Uh, Mother Teresa, uh, this is probably a good time for timing it. But, sure. you know, how many times in this standard of culture, this standard of culture for how we interpret information and propaganda, you say Mother Teresa and you instantly get warm little chill you know, fuzzies in your heart of a really kind, nice <laughs> goes out to help people. Marilyn Madeline style. I hope I got that last name right. But uh, here helps the six sticks with them. But the truth of that story is right. that sh Mother Teresa was a propaganda stick used by the I, uh, church, Catholic church. And it's mm -hmm. basically saying like, hey, listen, Whatever she does, we're going to say is the good thing. So we need to get sick people around her so that we can get pictures of her so that we can have her do quotes. And then when she, if she, oh, she got sick. Okay. Well, let's helicopter her out, get her the best medicine possible, get her best education, all that stuff. And then we'll just drop her right back into the sick people. And now okay. everything's mm -hmm. good. And I'm yeah, like, Hey, yeah. hold on a second here. What's this praying thing that she's doing? Does this actually help people? Or is it the science place that you took her to? And Every well, single, I mean, oh, Larry, go for it. She, she, she thought that suffering was godly. You know, the more they suffered, the better. But as soon as she started suffering, she went straight to get the best medical attention she possibly could to stop get me out of here. And let me tell you something. We saw that with Trump. We're, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll throw yeah. him out again. But it's like, how many times have we seen Trump say, well, the virus will never get to America? Oh, well, it's only one case. Uh, you can drink bleach and get rid of it, right? Is there like a light thing that you can shine on your body and get rid of it? Like, these are all things he actually said. It's China's virus. It's not really our problem. Like, we'll, we'll be like the flu again and it'll get out. And then it's like, oh, I got the flu. 
Oh, I got the COVID. COVID. Ship me out. Ship me out to the best hospital. We'll give you like the the latest energetic things. And then he goes right back to the White House. And the first thing he does is take off his face mask. Like, you, yeah, it wasn't a big deal. I'm like, so many lapses in empathy. And right. I wouldn't even consider Trump to be a holy figure or a religious person. Like if anything, he's just corrupt to the core, but it's in my opinion, just a complete lack of empathy. And what I found, George, we'll get um, to you right. up on narcissism. Yeah. 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 It's we're, we're going to handle, we're going to take, we're going to tackle narcissism. I think it would be good for a topic next week, but I'd say, yeah, I would so. say entropy is where I'm sorry. Religion is where entropy goes to die because with religion, you have the excuse to not be empathetic in the here and now. You don't have to worry about the consequences of your actions. You have this perfect trump card that says, all I got to do is pray to my holy God and I can get forgiveness for the faults that I cause on you. And I don't have to worry about these sick people because I pray to God to get them. That's now God's favor and that's his problem. And I can continue to do whatever I feel like doing, whatever I'm comfortable doing in the way that exact way that I like to do it. And whenever something non-self-serving comes and approaches me, like getting vaccinated so that we as a community can get rid of a disease. Oh, uh, I don't feel like doing that. Can God give me the excuse? Yes. Yes, of course. Cause yeah. you basically are your own God in your head. Cause you're programmed the version of him. That's copacetic to all the ideas. God always seems to know and want to do the same things you do. <laughs> God loves all your music. <laughs> it's funny your how that works. Eh? Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah. And, then, and whenever someone says, well, God, I don't believe in God. It's like, well, I'm offended. Why are you offended? I'm talking about your God, not you. Right. So <laughs> the whole thing is like, if you were empathetic and you cared about people, if you truly care about God's earth and God's creation or any of the true tenets of what Christianity purports is their own, you would get vaccinated period. And I can respect the decision that says, well, listen, here are my reasons for not getting vaccinated. Here's my decision, but I'm just letting you know, it's the wrong decision. It's the wrong decision to not get vaccinated. You should. Mm -hmm. And I think from the very beginning, we were arguing like, we need to learn from this incident. We need to learn from COVID because if we don't learn from this event, the next time it's going to hurt us even more. Cause who's to say that another disease isn't around the corner. Like we had this freak incident. We thankfully have a vaccine within a year. That's astounding, but that could happen every year for the next 10 years. We could have a brand new disease. And if we aren't willing to take care of ourselves, we'll either live together or die together. George. Mm -hmm. I, I, wasn't going to say anything. Uh, my bad, my bad, my bad. I thought you had a question. <laughs> Guys, final thoughts. Let's go around. Larry, what do you think? Um, well, it just, we're going to, we're looking to the church to help us in this vaccination thing. I think it just, they're not going to give it. They're going to do what they want to do. Basically for the same um, reasons you, that you just mentioned, we're not paying them to make the decision and they're, they're the congregation is paying them and right you know they're all about the money right right so. and i wish people would just look at that for their own sake i don't think we should leave it to the church to give out truth we should expect people to search for it because if the church mm -hmm. wants people and people like the truth that's how you solve the problem right and we've all uh except for george have been part of a church group like a group thought that didn't give you access to opportunities of critical thinking but we fought out of it and I'm saying we can, we can inspire people to do the same thing too. And it can be as short as a short chat or through the show or just a willingness to say, Hey, I'm vaccinated. Like I'm still alive. Right. I care about this. This is a real thing. These are the sources mm -hmm. of information that I think are worthwhile paying attention to. And you know how all the people who didn't get vaccinated got sick and died. Look at me. I'm still here and I'm playing disc golf and I'm having a fun time. D <laughs> Dread final thoughts. Yeah. Well, um, we've, I, uh, I'm a member of the BC humanist, uh, so, uh, society or association. And, um, they were the ones that, uh, had just recently, uh, made the point that, uh, Bonnie Henry's our top doctors, um, uh, order, uh, excluded, uh, churches from having to participate in this vaccination passport program. So, um, I'm throwing, I'm encouraging all pastafarians out there, uh, and anyone else for that matter, uh, to, uh, you know, sign the petition to, uh, have that, have that changed. So I'm going to, I'll tell you another good thing about that. I made that exact argument to my bosses at my job. And I was like, Hey, I don't want to work 
if there's other people who are sick or choosing not to get vaccinated, everyone in my group was the first to get vaccinated. We have multiple groups inside our building. And the way we know for a fact, there are people who won't get vaccinated regardless of the news that was out. I was like, I don't want it. Can I take this guest office? <laughs> the guest office, like this corner room, and it had like its own desk. It was beautiful, and they put me there for like a year, a year and a month. And then when I got out, they're like, "We like Tyrone in offices. You just take this other office." So I'm like, "I got an office now." I'm saying it's <laughs> worth making the argument. Go to your boss, make a point. It's only good things can happen. I guarantee you. Yeah, like, right, hey, right. I care about things safety. Can you can we make this more safe? Yes. Cool. Uh, George. Uh, last words? Um, <laughs> I don't really have any today. Fair enough. So fair I'll enough. pass. Yeah. Coffee? Hey, that's, a, coffee? That's, a, that's a very non narcissistic oh, way of saying. Uh, um, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 coffee. Well, okay. Um, well, coffee sweetener. That, uh, another topic. Most stevia on the market is fake. Oh. And that is a whole topic unto itself. Why do these guys get away with it? with marketing a product and calling it stevia when it's mostly something else. Nice. Oh, nice. Talk about olive oil. Same olive, thing. oil. olive oil. I didn't even know. Well, I know about Thank bottled you. water. I can throw that out. Like the taste of bottled water isn't even water. It's just minerals that people put in. There's like preparatory right. mixtures of minerals, but it's yeah. just water at the end of the day. Uh, Enough guys, out of me. <laughs> guys, I think we're at the end of the show and I think we had a good topic. I really appreciate discussion. Always like talking mm -hmm. to you. Dread Pirate, where can we find your stuff? Well, I am on uh, YouTube at M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E, Mind Pirate. Nice. I stream this show when I'm on every Sunday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Guys, do me a favor. If you see this episode on my YouTube channel, go over to Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E, right? And, 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 and subscribe and subscribe, hit that button. I guarantee you it's going to be some good stuff. Cause he was just telling us about this conversation he was going to have with an anti-vaxxer using Socratic examination, which is this beautiful way of talking to people about anything. And yeah. so, uh, George Brown is a cool dude. He's got a lot of coffee tips and we're going to be talking about narcissism next week. He's going to love that. And then you can find me on let's chat. I'll put the link to our, uh, uh, podcast. There's a lot of people asking about it in the description and maybe even put the audio. Well, let me on. say one thing. Let hey, me say just one thing. Go for it, George. Um, okay. Not so much narcissism as narcissistic personality disorder. Understood. 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 Okay. And then, um, we will go to put the audio from the videos on Google podcast manager. Maybe it'll give you guys access to these podcasts in the future and make it more easier because we want to spread the word. Larry, go ahead and take us out. Southern voice of dreams. Let's go. Remember, this show is available on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Owl, Owl Tale, and on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. My own content is available on digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click the blog, blog button uh, for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My book is called Atheism What's It All About? Wait, you wrote a it's book? It's available. I did. I did. Oh, a long time ago. Cool. Nice. It's available on Amazon. Uh, find my YouTube channel by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. And if you have any questions for the show, you can email them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. If you're having trouble with religious, leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help by going to recoveringfromreligion.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye everybody. So I heard a voice in my head that told me atheism is true. <laughs> <laughs>